Good evening, this is Pastor Kyle Keel from Trinity Lutheran Church, bringing you our Monday Thursday worship. We have our live stream of the service available on Facebook, um, but here in our PowerPoint video, you can you can sing the hymns and you can also follow along with all the words as we've been doing these past few weeks. Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Tonight, our worship begins with the Passion reading and a sermon, so that the liturgy may then move uninterrupted from confession and absolution until tomorrow and the cross. Jesus reveals that the disciples are receiving more than bread and wine at the Passover and the night in which he was betrayed. The Passion of our Lord, according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink anew in the kingdom of God. This is the passion of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all this day from our Father, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our Helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our lesson for consideration is Monday, Thursday. It's from the Passion according to Mark. In the name of our betrayed Savior, Jesus Christ, the people of God listening online right now. Today, there's blood all over the place in our liturgy, our hymns, which we're going to put online later, and our scripture readings. You know, for most of us, the sight of blood just makes us squeamish. Perhaps the bloodiness of our reading strikes you as odd and primitive, maybe even unsettling. So you need to look under all of this blood by hearing the word of God to find out that there's actually more than meets the eye. Our Old Testament reading, which we're going to get into later, sets the stage for the first Passover. The Lord had visited with nine plagues on the land of Egypt. The Passover marked the tenth and final one. To every house that was not protected by the blood of the consecrated lambs, the Lord came and struck down the firstborn sons. On the other hand, the Lord caused the destroy of death to then pass over the house's that were marked by the blood of the consecrated lamb. Well, this was such an historical occasion that God commanded his people to celebrate the Passover annually as a memorial meal. We'll take a hard look at the Passover. Dwelling only on the blood and the violence, it really might cause us to stumble. It shocks our peacemaking sensibilities. What kind of God would perpetrate such wrath against such helpless children. And it doesn't seem morbid or cruel to memorialize such a bloody, gory event. Look deeper. There's much more here than meets the eye. After Moses announced the institution of the Passover, we are told the people bowed their heads and worshiped. They recognize that when the Lord speaks his will, the only proper response is worship. The Passover is all about the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. Well, the tenth plague was a divine warfare against God's adulterous enemies, against the Egyptian false gods and the oppressor of his people. All of God's acts of judgments on adulterers, from the flood to the Passover, to the conquest of Canaan, are intended to warn us about the consequences of adultery and impenitence. They are previews of the final judgment that is to come. You also should see that this judgment is what you and I deserve and more. For your adulterous sins, for every time you did not fear, love, and trust in the Lord your God with all your heart, you deserve for destroyer to come and spill your blood on the ground while your soul is taken swiftly to hell for eternal punishment. That's what we all deserve as sinners. The Lord is no tame God. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For their own sins, the Israelites deserved the same fate as Egyptians. How many times did they forsake God? How many times did they turn to everything else except for God? But now look at the blood of the Passover lambs and see more than the eyes that meets the eye. 
to the naked eye, the blood of the lambs and the blood of the Egyptians would appear to be the same sticky red substance. Same blood. But God attached his word to the lamb's blood and gave his people a means of salvation from the destroyer. Under that blood of that Passover lambs, you do not find any merit or worthiness in the Israelites, but only the promise of deliverance from the gracious and merciful Lord. So the Passover was to be celebrated by Israel above all as a remembrance of his election of Israel and of his protection and salvation to them from their enemies. Later, the Lord would attach his word of forgiveness to the blood of the lambs, goats, and bulls in the sacrificial system operated by the priests at the tabernacle and the temple. Through the pouring out of blood in the most holy place, God provided a means of cleansing and forgiveness of his people's sins. And this leads us to find more than meets the eye in the upper room on the night when Jesus was betrayed. It was a Passover meal, so Israel's deliverance from Egypt was in view. And the recently shed blood of Passover lambs would be fresh on the disciples' minds. Surely they had celebrated this meal dozens of times with their families from little on. And they knew the Passover liturgy by heart, just as we do every Sunday. They thought they knew what was coming as they celebrated it with Jesus. But there would be more than meets the eye when Jesus, the Lord of Israel incarnate, revises the Passover liturgy. St. Mark writes, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them. So far, so good. No surprises there. But here's the bombshell. Then Jesus said over the bread, Take, this is my body. The disciples must have looked at one another with bewildered glances. Then Jesus seems to slip back into a regular liturgy, took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. They all drank of it. Okay, back to normal again. Perhaps they had just misheard Jesus earlier on, you know, as they were looking at each other like with relief that everything's just going back. Oh, <laughs> but then another bombshell. Jesus said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Once again, Jesus boggled their minds at this unprecedented Passover meal. Jesus teaches three main things to his disciples. First, that in a short while, a very short while, the very next day, his body would be given and his blood shed on the cross. And that under the apparently senseless slaughter of an innocent, holy, righteous man, they should see his death as a ransom for many, for the sins of the whole world. This is God's final judgment on sin. And from that day forward, the only sin that condemns to hell remains adultery. But specifically the adultery of rejecting Jesus and his death for the life and forgiveness of the whole world. Second, Jesus teaches that in a mysterious and supernatural way, there is more than meets the eye under the simple bread and wine of an ordinary Passover meal. Now, by the power of the word, the bread was truly his body, and the wine was truly his blood, given to his disciples for the forgiveness of sins, for life and salvation. Further, by his words, do this, he instituted the Lord's Supper for his whole church to proclaim his death to the end of time. No matter where they gather, no matter where they hear the word of God, no matter what time it is, age period, Jesus has given his bread and wine for all his people of all times, of all places. And thirdly, Jesus was teaching them that that Passover that happened in the Old Testament and the sacrificial system of the Israelites were types or prefigurements of his once for all sacrificial death on the cross. But now these Old Testaments must give way to the New Testament of his blood. 
John the Baptist had pointed to Jesus and proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And later, St. Paul would write, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. And so at the Last Supper and on Good Friday, God's holy, spotless lamb, Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, finally offered his life as a ransom for many. So that sinners don't have to get what they deserve, but instead they get what Jesus earned for them. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing forward to the coming of the Lord in the flesh as the Messiah to redeem his people and win forgiveness for not just Israel, but Gentiles too for all people. So now, and until Christ returns, the atoning blood of Jesus would be sacramentally fed to God's people in, with, and under the wine of Holy Communion. And what is in that blood that doesn't meet the eye? Life. The blood of Jesus delivers to us the forgiveness of sins and serves as an antidote to death. Serves as an antidote against everything that is going on in the world today. God said, the life is in the blood. And that is what Christ's disciples received as the life-giving blood of Jesus is drunk by us in the Lord's Supper. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. For as you come in faith to Jesus to feed on his holy body, given and his blood shed for you, Jesus promises, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. And though we cannot gather today and this evening to receive our Lord's body and blood, this Easter Sunday, starting at 830, I encourage you to hop in your vehicle. Don't worry, we're still going to practice social distancing. Come through our church driveway. And I will distribute the Lord's body and blood in with and under the bread and wine to everyone in the vehicle who has been confirmed and understands what they are receiving. I will pass it only to the driver, though, so I just want to clarify that. I'm just going to pass it to the driver, and then the driver will pass it to everyone else that is in that vehicle. It's especially a celebration, not just of tonight, but Easter, of our Lord's resurrection that we look forward to. and celebrate every Sunday to finally, when the day we can meet together again. We'll get to receive our Christ's body and blood in with another, the bread and wine. Amongst all our brothers and sisters who will get to fill up these pews again and sing the joys and praises of our Lord. For what he came to do for us tonight, instituting his, his, uh, bread and, instituting his body and blood in Holy Communion. And then going to the garden and praying. Being arrested for us. To deliver us. To save us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God our Father guard your hearts and your minds in our Savior Jesus Christ as he fills you with the Holy Spirit to see more than what meets the eye of Christ's love, forgiveness, life, and salvation in, with, and under his body and blood that is in, with, and under bread and wine. Amen. On Ash Wednesday, there are physical signs of repentance visible in the mirror and to everyone we met. The ashes were placed on each of our individual foreheads. One day soon, many of us will be receiving our Lord's body and blood somehow in, with, and under the bread and wine, certainly more than our physical eyes can perceive. But we cannot commune with our Lord so intimately, sinners that we are. Penitence is not enough. We need God's forgiveness, assured thereby that God's Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, has averted the death sentence our sins deserve, as surely as the Lamb's blood told the angel of death to pass over an Israelite home so long ago. Let us therefore confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, imploring Him for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I am by nature sinful and unclean. Confess to you that I have failed to see you present in my daily living. In addition to my faults that are visible to the people around me, you know my secret thoughts, my whispered words, and my furtive actions. For these and other sins I have hidden even from myself, I am hardly sorry. I repent of them and pray that you will show me mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness but God's? Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole body, spirit, soul be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, visible in the Lord's Supper, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace the whole world may see, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all who see in Christ their Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who show here their faith and worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in his wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
When the Israelites were captive in Egypt, God instructed them to put lamb's blood on their doorposts as a visible sign for the angel of death to pass over them, so that they would always remember that night they were to observe the Passover cedar, a meal prepared and eaten as God directed them. The Old Testament reading for Holy Thursday is from the 12th chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast it on fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Paul reminds us that in the sacrament, we are visibly proclaiming what onlookers miss the Lord's death, his body and blood, until he returns. The epistles from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we will not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. As he washes their feet, Jesus opens the disciples' eyes to what true servanthood means. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet 
and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand, but afterwards you never wash my feet. If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. The one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done to you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church around the world, for ourselves and all people in their various needs. For farmers and ranchers and those who bring food to market, that God would provide favorable weather, bountiful harvest, and relief from both drought and flood, let us pray to the Lord. Look on them all in your mercy, Heavenly Father. For all who struggle with unemployment or underemployment, with poor living conditions or displacement from home, with personal demons or ill health, let us pray to the Lord. Behold their turmoil, Lord Jesus, and grant them relief and hope. For all people in authority over communities and countries, all whose decisions affect the climate of the planet and health of its inhabitants, and all who maintain justice within their borders and peace among nations, let us pray to the Lord. Gaze upon your servants, O Lord, protect and guide them, that they may serve with wisdom, compassion, and courage. For all who serve the Lord as they care for others, medical personnel and first responders, counselors and advisors, friends and neighbors and volunteers, let us pray to the Lord. Observe how they use the gifts you have given them, O Holy Spirit, and open doors of opportunity for them so that many may rejoice together. For the church around the world, as clergy and lay leaders seek to proclaim the gospel and faithfully endeavor to share their faith, especially in the face of persecution, let us pray to the Lord. See their struggle, O Holy Spirit, and give them strength to preserve and grow. For the church, wherever it gathers around word and sacrament, relying on God's steadfast love and faithfulness, and looking forward to the fulfillment of all his gracious promises, let us pray to the Lord. Watch over your church, Lord Jesus. Protect and defend us until that day we see you face to face. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. 
But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said empathetically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.